Welcome back, everybody, to the Celtic Forever podcast. We're here to go over St Mirren versus Celtic on Sunday, 2 p.m. kickoff in the SMISA Stadium. That's the new St Mirren Park. Uh, if you could hit the like, share, and su- subscribe button, please like, share, and subscribe. Easy for me to say. That would be appreciated. John, no, John, not with us tonight. Uh, we're back with us for the post match tomorrow, so I'm doing the preview myself. Let's go into the competition. This is our last chance to enter everybody, so let's go into the competition. Very simple. All we're looking for is what minute and second will the last goal be scored in the St Mirren versus Celtic game on Sunday. So that's the minute and the second, remember, uh, give you a better chance of winning. That's the last goal as well. So we're not looking for the first goal this week. We're looking for the last goal. Just leave your guesses in the comments section. And good luck to everybody that enters. Up to five guesses each, remember. Um, yeah, as I say, good luck to everybody that enters. There's very little entries. So if you enter, you've got a great chance of winning this week's prize which is the Stevie Chalmers Legends frame print. So get entering, everybody. Get your guesses in. Five guesses each. You'll have a great chance of winning it. OK, let's move on. We're here to do the preview for the St Mirren game tomorrow. Um, let's have a look at all the fixtures that were played today. No real shocks there. I think the only real shock was Partick Thistle beating Martin Dale's Livingston. So that's Livingston out again. Also, so Martindale's going to be sacked. He's not won in about 12 games. So uh, that was a 4-1 win for Partick Thistle. But everything else, you you would sort of uh, expect uh, the results. And Rangers against Air United. Scott Brown's Air United kicks off at 5.30. So we're about five minutes from kickoff just now. So uh, if there's any updates, we'll keep you updated with that as we do the podcast. Um, but good luck to Scott Brown's Air United anyway. A quick, a wee, a wee quick look back on Wednesday night's game against Hibs. There's been a lot of, you know, unrest about Celtic's performance, even though it was a 2-1 one, one for Celtic. Performance wasn't great. So all we're looking for is for Celtic to bounce back with a performance and a win on Sunday. Uh, but it's not going to be easy because St Mirren are on form, aren't they? Uh, just off the back of a 2 0 win at the weekend against Dundee. So it's not going to be easy. It never is up there at St Mirren Park. So uh, we're just looking for a performance. It's, as I say, it's going to be tough. It's, it's always tough when we go up there. But we'll get into that a wee bit later on. Um, what we think the formation is going to be, the lineups, etc. Et so the game's going to be played at New St Mirren Park or SMISA Stadium, as it's called nowadays. So we'll just stick with St Mirren Park. Two o'clock kickoff. Referee for this one is David Dickinson. David Dickinson, the ref. Uh, and on VAR, we have Alan Muir. The game will be shown on Via Play Sports 1. At night. That programme starts at half past one for the two o'clock kickoff. So that's updated with everything that's happening as regards to televised coverage of the game. Celtic. Let's, let's, let's have a wee look at the, the injury list and the, and the players missing list. It's, it's a wee bit shorter than what it was. But obvious, obviously we've added Alistair Johnson to the injury list. So Alistair Johnson, he's going to be missing on Sunday. But there's no results from the the scan that he's had yet. Obviously, Brendan thinks it's a, a fracture on his head. So if it is a fracture on his head, he's going to be out for weeks. So that's no great news. So we just need to wait on the results of the scan. But he's definitely missing for the game on Sunday. Hatati's still out long term. Vickers is still another couple of weeks away. And Greg Taylor will be back for next weekend. So we're beginning to get some players back, I suppose, because obviously Thiago Holm, he returns on Sunday. Oh, and Yang also returned from international duty. So, yeah, we're beginning to get a few of these players back. So hopefully that adds a wee bit of strength to the team. But... You know, fingers crossed for Alistair Johnston. We don't need him at long term. He's he's a mainstay in the team. He's one of our main players. So hope, hopefully the scan results come back positive for us. The draw for the quarterfinal, should we make it on Sunday, which I think we will, obviously, is at 4.30 on BBC Scotland. If anybody wants to watch the draw for the quarterfinal, as long as Celtic are in it, I don't care what else happens. That's all that matters, as long as we're in the draw. 
Let's quickly go on to some betting for the, the game on Sunday. Gamble responsibly, obviously. They're, they're making Celtic hot, hot favourites for this one. So Mirren, 10 to 1 to 1 in 90 minutes. The draw, 5 to 1. And Celtic to win in 90 minutes is 3 to 10. So that's your bets on the uh, the 90 minute one. 21 for St Mirren, I thought that's quite high because they're, they're obviously a decent wee team and they're, they're on form just now as well. We'll get into their form in a wee minute. So first goal scorers, first goal scorer for this one, obviously big, Ida, Ida, sorry, scored the double on Wednesday night with the, the two penalties. But let's see if we, he can start putting the ball into the net from open play. That's what we're looking for. So Ida, Kyogo and O, all 41 to score the first goal. Kuhn, Matt O'Reilly and Parma, all 71 to score the first goal. Yeah, big, big Ida, we're looking for we're looking for him to, you know, he looks half decent, he looks half decent, so, um, yeah, 41 for him to score the first goal. Kyogo, we just need the, the, the boy to get back on for him. He obviously won us the penalty on Wednesday night, so that was good. Hopefully that will give him a wee bit of confidence. Yeah, we just need him to start hitting the ball into the back of the, the net again, don't we? So that's uh, that's your betting on the the first goal scorer in the game. Correct scores, correct score. Let's have a wee look. One 0 to Celtic, seventy one. Two 0 eleven to two. Three 0 seventy one. Four 0 twelve to one. And five 0 is twenty five to one. Two uh, one to Celtic is eight to one. And three one to Celtic is ten to one. We're not looking at some Mirren one because obviously. We're not looking at that at all. We, we don't even want to go anywhere near us at Mirren one or draw. That's uh, it's got to be a Celtic win on Sunday. That goes without saying, obviously. St Mirren's form going into the game. Last time out, as I said earlier, two nothing win last time out against Dundee at home. So the form is one one lost one lost one one. So they're on half decent form, you know. Two losses and four wins out of the last six. So St Mirren on half decent forum there. So we need to we need to be at our best on Sunday. Celtic are obviously there unbeaten in the last eight games. Uh, the only slip up, if you like, was the draw at Petodre against Aberdeen. But apart for, apart for that, it's um, seven wins and one draw in the last eight for Celtic. So although the team isn't performing great on the park just now, they're still getting the results, and that's important when you're not playing well to still get the results. So, yeah, we need these performances to start picking up and start putting these teams to bed. Unbeaten in six against St Mirren as well. So the last six times I've played them, I've been unbeaten against them. So that's good as well. Last time out was a 3 nothing win. Obviously, that was at St Mirren Park as well. A great win there. 3 nothing out, 3 nothing to Celtic at St Mirren Park. Very confident win that day. Under no pressure whatsoever. Not a problem. 3-0. We're looking for the same on Sunday. Uh, Celtic to win by over three goals tomorrow. So if Celtic were to win, say, 4 nothing, for example, 4, 5, 6, whatever, but say 4 nothing, which is going to be very tough to do, but if they were to win by over three goals, the price for that is 11-4, to four, if anybody fancies that. So let's have a wee look at the new section for the podcast. New section, Xander's Bet Builder. Xander's Bet Builder. Here it is, Xander's Bet Builder this week is Celtic to win, Palmer to score any time in the game, and both teams to score is 6-1. to one. So that's Xander's Bet Builder for this week. Good luck if you put a wee bet on that. Okay, let's move on. Team lineup prediction. Right, okay, team lineup prediction. It's going to be tough because we've got Johnston out now, we've got Taylor out now. So, who do you pick at left back? Who do you pick at right back? Let's have a wee look at it. So, you're going to have Joe Hart in goal with Ralston at right back, Naroki and Scales at centre back with Bernabai and left back, Callum McGregor, Bernardo, and Matt O'Reilly in the centre as usual. We're going to have Eder up front with Maeda on the right wing. And I think it's going to be Palmer on the left. So that's my predicted 11. Obviously, it's just a prediction. Could be right, could be wrong. We'll find out at 2 o'clock tomorrow. 
So that's a, that's that's the lineup. Tell me what you think in the comments, Fox. What do you think of that lineup? Is it good enough to beat St Mirren? Strong enough? Do you think we'll? I've picked the right team there. Just let me know in the comments what you think, or even if you want, put your predicted eleven in the comments and uh, let me know what you think. So, score prediction time, people. Score prediction time. Ooh, it's going to be tricky. I'm going to say three one, three one to Celtic. I think St Mirren have got a goal in them against Celtic. They're on form just now. They're scoring plenty of goals. Yeah, they beat St Mirren. Uh, sorry, they beat St Mirren beat St Mirren. <laughs> St Mirren beat Dundee at the weekend 2-0. In the midweek previous to that, they beat Hibs 3-0. So they're scoring plenty of goals. Uh, they're, they're getting the results. They're on form. So, yeah, 3-1 to Celtic. I think we'll come out there flying tomorrow to start with. But, but what, I, what I want to see from Celtic on Sunday is two two good halves instead of one good half, because that seems to be the way we Celtic just now. They play well in one of the halves and not two of the halves. So I'm looking for a 90 minutes of Celtic playing well, uh, and we'll, we'll take it for there. So that's my prediction, 3-1 to Celtic. Hope I'm right. Let me know what you think the score's going to be in the comments section, what your guess is. Just let me know in the comments. Um, okay, let's get into the comments. Speaking of which... Let's have a wee look at the comments. Fishing Stevie says, defence is crap. That's number one problem to sort out. Ask any manager worth his salt, from Martin O'Neill to Walter Smith, always get the defence sorted. Well, it's tough in to Fishing Stevie because we've got a lot of injuries. You know, Carter Vickers out injured, Taylor out injured, Johnston out injured. It's tough to have a strong defence when three of your main players are out injured. So that's a good point. You do have to have a strong defence, but I think we do have a strong defence when they're all fit and available. Tell me what you think in the comments, people. Tell me what you think. Next, well, thanks for the comment, Fishing Stevie. Next comment, we would never let our club die, says, just looked at the fixtures and noticed that Sevco will have played four home games on the bounce when they play Air and Ross County and never knew that a team could play four games on the bounce. Yeah. Four games in a row at home, which means we are playing four games away from home in a row. So that's it's tough for us just now. It's really tough for Celtic, but we just need to get through these tough fixtures. You have to play the teams that are, that are put in front of you, as as they say. So, yeah, yeah, four games in a row at home. You know, it's a much confidence booster that you need. Celtic four away games in a row. We're doing well, apart from the slip up against Aberdeen. Uh, but the performance have, performances haven't been great, so let's get these performances up. But thanks for the comment. We would never let a club die. We would never sell a club for a pound, says Hibs put in some fight last night and could have won the game and yet got smashed by St Mirren. I find that a strange one. Yeah, who doesn't find that strange? You know, St Mirren, you know, beating Hibs for the canter, an absolute canter. And then they come up against Celtic and put in a battling performance like that. Tell me in the comment section what you think the reason is for that. Just tell me what you think the reason is for the, you know, the performance I was put in against Celtic. Because you've got to remember that just the week before, they got gubbed after Rangers as well. So, you know, why why do they save their best for Celtic, do you think? Uh, I just personally think it's because they're playing the champions and they, they battle and they battle and they... You know, they fight for every ball, every 50-50, which is what they should be doing in every game, not just against Celtic. But tell me what you think in the comments anyway. Uh, thanks for the comment. We would never sell a club for a pound. Keep the comments coming in, lads. Paul McComb says, Xander and John, you're dead right to call out these fouls out. It's happening all the time on our players. Someone's going to get seriously injured. Well, somebody did get seriously injured, Alistair Johnson. An absolute disgusting... Header on Alistair Johnston in midweek there. That's him. He could be out for weeks or even months if it's a head fracture. You know, probably come back with one of these head masks on, if you like. You'll probably come back having to wear one of them. But, you know, the results for the scan are due today. So there's not, I've not heard anything yet. So we're just hoping that it's no fracture and uh, he's OK. And he's OK to play next weekend. But going by the work we've got with injuries just now, it's uh, it's not looking good, is it? So we'll just need to wait and see where the scan results on his head are. Thanks for the comment, Paul McComb. 
James Doran says, shocking performance last night with only eight attempts on goal and only for Hart pulling off those saves would have lost the game. Don't want to have repeat of repeat performance versus St Mirren. Well, yeah, James, a couple of things there. I didn't know we had eight shots in goal against Hibs in midweek. I, I didn't see it, you know. Eight attempts in goal. Obviously, two of them are penalties. I didn't really see many more attempts, one or two, but I didn't know it was eight. So, yeah, you must be right if, if that's what you're saying. Eight attempts in goal isn't great either for Celtic, though, is it? We should be looking for a lot more. Hart saves were brilliant, you know. He's keeping his in games just now, big Joe Hart, isn't he? Where would we be if it wasn't, if it wasn't Joe Hart in goals, if it was Bain in goals, you know? He's pulling off save after save in every game. But we kind of keep relying on big Joe Hart, can we? Uh, repeat performance against St Mirren yeah, uh, just mentioned it five minutes ago 90 minutes we need the players to be out there for 90 minutes putting on a show and putting on a performance yeah, thanks for the comment James um, Eclectic Minecraft says his badge and the poppy says it all about them <laughs> I don't think I don't think Eclectic Minecraft is too keen on the old hibs but he's uh, that was the badge I put up on midweek um, then it's there on the screen again Uh yeah, I don't, don't, don't know if there's anything in that, but, you know, they do they do tend to do all their battling uh, and leave it for Celtic, didn't they? And then get gubbed against teams like St Mirren and, you know, St Johnston and players at Livingston, you know, but they put in performances like, that, performances like that against Celtic. Yeah, thanks for the comment, Eclectic Minecraft. We would never sell a club for a pound came back in, saying, that was a hard watch last night and we got out of jail. And we had to do our last gap Last gasp, Tav pen at the end, yeah. Yeah, um, two penalties in the game, you know, we do is slag Rangers for getting penalty after penalty. But for once, we, do, we get it, you know, we get it when it counts. Because normally when Celtic get a penalty, we're three, four or five, nothing up at the time. It means nothing. When they get their penalties, it's nothing each, or they're getting beat one, nothing, and they get a penalty to dig them out. But on midweek there, we got two when it counted, so... We kind of complained just now, anyway. Um, but we still came out of the game with three vital points. Yeah, and it could be crucial at the end of the season. Bang on, we would never sell our club. Great, great wee comment again, pal. Keep the comments coming in. That that three points could be the difference at the end of the season. Just remember that. Just think about that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, vital three points. And we move on to St Mirren on Sunday. CFC... 1988 double says that was a good listen tonight lads brutally honest you don't get this on other pods yeah <laughs> on Wednesday night I was a wee bit uh, <laughs> I was a wee bit um, lubricated shall we say <laughs> uh, but yeah I was a wee bit annoyed with some of the tackles going in and Celtic players obviously Alistair Johnson the main one but there was a load of other tackles Um <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it was a bit too brutally honest I don't know I, and John was the same obviously so <laughs> yeah okay yeah that was um, that was quite funny on Wednesday night yeah sometimes you've just got to be brutally honest you know and tell it as it is so that's that's all John and myself do we tell it as it is yeah so that's uh, thanks for the comment CFC 1988 double uh, that's your first comment so thanks keep the comments coming in pal and the same for anybody that's watching or listening to the podcast. Put in a comment. We'll read it out. We'll always read it out. So just put in your comments. We'll always try and read it as many as we possibly can. Um, all right, that wraps up the comments. That wraps up for the comments section. I'm going to I'm going to do something different tonight. I'm going to bring in one of my grandsons because John's not here. He's a Celtic daft. He goes to quite a lot of the games. So... Um, here he is, here he is, we, we Matthew, here, here he is. So, tonight, because John's not here, I brought in my two wee grandsons, Ashton and Matthew. How are you doing, Ashton and Matthew? How's things? I'm very good, yep. Good stuff, boys, good stuff. Just, uh, what did you think of the Hibs game in midweek there? Uh, Matthew, what did you think of it? I thought it was terrible. We played very mid, and I think um, we were very lucky to get that penalty in the last minute of the game. Yeah, I was lucky, wasn't it? I mean, mm-hmm. We're lucky to come out there with that. That new boy's a very good scorer. Uh, Ida, do you like the look of Ida? Aye. Uh, what do you think, Ashton? 
Uh, I don't really like Celtic or the matches, but um, all I know is that they played terrible and I don't know how we won. He watches the highlights. Yeah, yeah, you're right, son. We did play terrible. But how did we win, though? Yeah, well, sometimes we, we, we do these things, we, we win the games, you know, but we got the win and that was the most important thing, three points. So mm-hmm. let's go into the game on Sunday against Mirren in the Scottish Cup. Matthew, what do you think the score's going to be, son? Um, I'm thinking 3-2 to Celtic. 3-2? It's going to be a very close game, the way we played on the weekend, or midweek, I think. Mm-hmm. What did you think, Ashton? I think it's going to be close to, I think it might be 2-1. 2-1 two, two to Celtic? Yes. Yeah. Right, good boy, good boy. All right, boys, thanks for coming on. Thank you for the wee clip, and uh, we'll get you on uh, another podcast in the future. All right, boys? Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much. See you later. Uh, yep, yeah. goodbye. So thanks to the boys there for doing the wee bit. Just, they've always wanted to come on to the podcast, so I hope you don't mind that, folks. Um, we Matthews 10, we Ashton 7, so yeah, they they just love Celtic, you know, so I just thought uh, I'd make their day and bring them onto the podcast for a wee minute. So let's move on, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, so, well, just another wee touch on the promotion before we go, right, so very simple, what minute with the last goal we scored in the Mirren versus Celtic game on Sunday, so that's the last goal, waiting for the minute and the seconds, up to five guesses each, remember, Put your guesses in the comments section. Uh, and good luck to everybody that enters. Entries close at 2 o'clock on Sunday and the winner will be announced on the post, the preview, sorry, the post podcast on Sunday after the St. Mirren game. So good luck to everybody that enters the competition. All right, let's wrap that up there. That, ju- that just about does it for the night. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna, the boys even said there, you know, my grandsons, it's going to be tough. I think they're right. I think it's going to be tough, but I think we're strong enough and good enough to overcome St Mirren. They always make it tough up there at St Mirren Park, but yeah, 3-1 to Celtic, I says. So yeah, yeah. as long as you're in the next round for the Cup, that's all that matters. Nothing else matters. So we'll see you all on Sunday night for the post-match podcast after the St Mirren game. Hopefully we're all happy after a Celtic one into the next round. So thanks for now, everybody. Catch us all on Sunday. Hail, hail.